Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm gonna explain how you can do some long-term planning using a scope and sequence. Now, long-term planning can feel really overwhelming, but once you've got it done, you will feel so good, and it will really keep you on track throughout the school year. So in this video, I'm gonna break all of that down for you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to go ahead and do that now and hit the little bell so that you're notified every time I post a brand new video about teaching literacy in K2. Okay, so I know a lot of teachers who feel really overwhelmed when they see that they have not just one scope and sequence, right? But then you have one for each subject to teach. I love teaching elementary self-contained, or I loved it before I became a literacy specialist, but that's the one of the challenges is you have all of these subjects and um, you're trying to figure out how to make it all work how to fit everything in throughout the school year, and that can be kind of stressful. If you have ever felt overwhelmed by, you know, the long-term planning process or even just planning for like a quarter, just type me in the comments so that other teachers know that they are not alone in that. Okay, so let's talk about some things that you'll want to gather when you're doing your long-term planning. Number one, make sure you have your school calendar. There's always like, you know, breaks, days off, professional development, whatever else you got going on. You want to make sure that you know when those things are because otherwise you could end up planning like so much content for a week and then it ends up being Thanksgiving and you only have two days of instruction. The other thing I think to think about too is like you might have inclement weather days or you might be out sick or a lot of the kids might be out sick and then you kind of have to rework things. So even though you have your school calendar, also keep in mind that like if you're planning for a unit, leave yourself a couple of extra days. Even if nothing bizarre or out of the ordinary happens, you might have students that just need reteaching. So I always love to give myself just a few extra days for wiggle room. You will also want to have your, ideally your, your daily schedule laid out. So do you have blocks for phonics, for writing, for math, whatever else? Your school may tell you, okay, you're teaching phonics from this time to this time and you're teaching writing from this time to this time. Or you might just have generally like, literacy in the morning, right? But it does, when you're doing your long-term planning, help to know like how much time you have for each subject. Um, and are you teaching every subject every day? Or do you have like A day, B days where you rotate between subjects? All of that can really factor into how much you're able to cover in a given period of time. Okay, so in addition to schedules and calendars, you'll also want to bring the scope and sequence that you hopefully have for, um, you know, from your school or from like the different programs, curriculums that your school is having you use. And I find it really helpful to lay out, like you can kind of see in this example, hopefully that is <laughs> clear for you, but like we have core reading skills, core writing skills, grammar, phonics, phonological awareness, this is actually a freebie that you can get for me. I have it for kindergarten and then first and second grade. But essentially here, you know, you have not just one subject, but I've taken the different subjects and put them together so that you can see, I don't know, sometimes skills connect. Sometimes you'll notice like, okay, like we're going to be doing a really big project in science and social studies. Maybe I can pull in some of these literacy skills to save time, but I really do feel like it's helpful to have some way of looking at them all together. Now, do you need to like retype your entire scope and sequence for every subject? I don't think so, but you know, you could just do generally speaking, like it doesn't have to be as detailed as this. It could be, you know, like, okay, like we're doing this project in social studies and then we're working on like these core comprehension skills in literacy so that you can kind of look at it all together. This one just has literacy skills, but if you wanna take like a spreadsheet, I do feel like it's easier to type it up because then you can go in and make changes more easily. If you wanna take like a, a spreadsheet and really lay it out, like, you know, columns, individual skills. Again, it doesn't have to be as detailed as the scope and sequence of like a program that it would provide you, but if you can get the big picture things, it can really be helpful in planning your year. And one other thing I kind of probably should have mentioned earlier, but assessment, you may need to have certain times blocked off in that scope and sequence for assessment, especially in K2. You know, you may be doing a good number of one-on-one -on -one assessments throughout the year. So you want to have time built in that might be like at the beginning, middle and end of the year. It might be after each unit. Maybe it's not that you have to have a ton of time built in, but you need time for a test. So remember to incorporate assessment. And like I said, those wiggle room days when you're planning out like, okay, we're gonna take this number of weeks for this many units. 
Now, as you're filling everything in, you might notice like, oh my goodness, it's not all gonna fit into the in into the year. And I wanna reassure you, especially if you're a new teacher, that that is totally normal. Uh, my preference is quality rather than quantity, but definitely check with like other teachers at your school or at your grade level if that's an option for you, if you've got a team and see like, are there certain things that they don't usually get to, maybe the, the following grade level does, or, you know, even check with one grade level up, like, hey, like if we don't get to this, like, do you cover it in third grade if you're a second grade teacher? So some collaboration at your school level is necessary, especially if you're noticing like, okay, it's the beginning of the year and we haven't even had anything weird happen or weird interruptions, but like, it's not gonna all fit in. Just make sure that you're communicating with other people either at your team, above or below you, um, depending on what grade level you're teaching, to make sure that you are covering the things that your school, um, your team feels are most important. So to kind of put it all together, you've got your school calendar. Maybe you even wanna plan all of this on like a big calendar, right? Like it can be helpful to write it out by hand, but again, I really recommend typing. So maybe you take a big calendar and you kind of sketch out like, okay, like this is about how long math is gonna, you know, this math unit's gonna be and this how long that's gonna be, but then you type it up um, so that you can more easily make changes. Cause I know I definitely have like written stuff on a calendar and then been like, oh, we got off and it's like all messed up. So that's why I do feel like it's helpful to type. But again, we're thinking about assessment time. We're thinking about um, days off. We're thinking about wiggle room. All of those things um, are gonna play into the way that you're laying everything out on the calendar. And if you do want a free literacy scope and sequence for either, I don't know if I'm holding the right one, yes, kindergarten or first and second grade, I will include a link with this video so that you can get access. Of course, it may not like 100% match exactly what your school is giving you, but A, if you don't have something, it is definitely something to start with, right? Something to build from. And B, if you're like, I don't know if my scope and sequence really covers everything that's the most important, definitely grab this freebie because it's just another resource that you can have handy when you're doing this kind of long-term planning. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.